city of mine How I love, how I love the city of mine It never gets me down City of mine How I love, how I love the city of mine It never gets me down, yeah I was born in the city was raised on its edges, my pop work is life when it's calm. Amazing Grace how sweet the sound saved a wretch like me you know what time it is it's conversation time it's time to grab your beverage grab something to write with something to write on get a comfortable today because today's conversation it's like a love hate relationship when you consider the circumstances that caused this song to be so revered by black people, many people, but specifically during Black History Month, our people. And I want you to see yourself today as a recipient of God's grace and a dispenser of grace. My God, pay attention. Matter of fact, tag some people who are lovers of God, lovers of history, lovers of black history, and, and people that you just want to see prosper. Tell them to come on and join you. Let it be a watch party. As we converse today, uh, about the things of God, living in a light of grace. And how amazing grace guides us forward. And we already know the word of the Lord is, is blessed. It's conversation time. Who can tell me the connection uh, between African Americans, black people, and the hymn Amazing Grace? No wrong answers. I just would love to hear your thoughts process. What's the connection between our struggle and the connection? with the hymn, Amazing Grace. Come on, from your perspective, go ahead and let me know in the comments section. Because this hymn, it's really one of the most well-known, well-regarded hymns in the whole entire world. It was my father's favorite. Right before he would preach, Come on, old schoolers who remember. He would sing a verse of amazing grace, not only to prepare his mind, but to prepare the people to receive from God. It's a symbol. That's right. I see you, brother. It's a symbol of hope, a hymn of hope. I love that. It's a symbol of hope, a symbol of redemption, a symbol of forgiveness. It has a rich history. Oh, it's about to get bumpy. Sung during, at different churches, different social settings, funeral. And of course, during the civil rights movement, this song was a staple. But do you know the history? behind Amazing Grace. We need to talk about that. Do you know the history 
behind the hymn. Well, that's why I'm here for your resident historian, your resident theologian to kind of help you out. John Newton. He was the author who penned the words Amazing Grace, the song Amazing Grace. Check this out in 1772. A little history. John Newton. Come on, lean in because it's where I get a little rocky. John Newton was a slave trader from England. And during one of the transatlantic slave journeys, John Newton, author of Amazing Grace, he encounters a storm. And he encounters a storm that he had never encountered before, a storm that he had never seen before. Now, mind you, most of these slavers were good mariners, proficient in water, proficient in the ocean. But this was a storm that he had never seen. He almost loses his life. And in the midst of the storm, he reflects. He begins to think about how he made it through the storm. He begins to think about what kept him during the storm. He begins to think about how he made it through the storm. And he can only find two words, amazing grace. And he wants to tell people about his faith in God and how much it changed his life. So immediately, when he gets to, to shore, he does something remarkable. He renounces slavery, walks away from a lucrative business, no doubt, becomes a preacher. <laughs> and this ex-slaver turned preacher through a reflection process is where we get these words today. And, and so this song that was birthed in England made its way to the United States, and here we are, 2023, song still revered in many of our hearts. Now, this song is much, much more, much more than just an, an actual hymn, especially for us. For us, you all, digital pastors, drop this in the comment. For black people, this is a song of hope. A song of redemption, a song of forgiveness, and the song has a message embedded just as you see embedded in this video screen. And what's embedded in the message, salvation, grace, comfort, and inspiration that's available to all regardless of gender, color, creed, God's grace is real. God's grace is why this song resonates with us. Hope, redemption, and grace speaks to the experiences that we all know so well. One of those songs that have stood the test of time. Come on, 1772 up until 2023. My God played an essential role in shaping the foundation of who we are as God's people. And in standing the test of time, what I'm going to show you is how it transforms even today. And so can I set the table, you all, because the transformative power of God is on display. 
because I want you to see hope. I want you to see uh -huh, forgiveness. I want you to see redemption. So let's dive into this hymn. Show the connection of the amazing grace of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 are the, is the foundational passage. But we need to set context. And so I just want you to walk with me. Can you walk with me? I'm going to start at verse 1 and I'm going to jump around. Then I'm going to get to the foundational text for sake of time. But I want you to see something. Verse 1, Ephesians 2. As for you, he's talking to us. This is Paul writing to us. He says, you are dead in your transgressions and sins in what you were used to live when you followed the ways of the world, the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Verse four says, but because of his great love for us, this is grace on display. God, who is rich in mercy, verse 5, this is where I need to draw a parallel to verse 8. Verse 5 says, he made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. Look at this. It is by grace you and I have been saved. Now let me jaywalk to verse 8 because Paul doubles down on it because he wants the listener to get it. So in verse 8 says, For it is by grace, there it is again, twice mentioned, you've been saved through faith, which is not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. Verse 9, not by works so that one can boast. Verse 10, man, whew, I want you to drop this in the chat. I told you, you got to see yourself in the story. For Stars Jr. is God's workmanship. You, you put your name right there. For we are God's workmanship, created in Jesus to do good works, which God prepared us in advance to do so. Now, now, I'm going to set a little context and then I'm going to tell you what I came to tell you and we're going to bounce. All right, y'all ready? We all ready? Come on, let me know uh, in the comments section. Let me know that you're ready. Now, check this out. Verses eight and nine explain the boundless riches of God's grace. And this is attached to, don't even try to take notes on this, the incomprehensibility of God, a theological doctrine regarding the attribute of God in that we can't even begin to comprehend why he's so good to us. Teach Clarence Edward. And so Paul is establishing that the base of our salvation is rooted in grace. The base is grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And he's trying to get us to understand that you can't buy it. You can't bargain for it. Doesn't matter how tall you are. Doesn't matter how vertically challenged one may be. Gender has nothing to do with this. Status has nothing to do with this. The incomprehensibility of God says it is nothing in you that can get it. Grace. And because we have it and it's been freely given, then therefore we should rejoice in the fact that he keeps from us what we deserve, which is justice and gives us two paternal twins to hold us 
grace, <laughs> and mercy. And this is because he doesn't want us taking credit for something that he did. Because when I look back over my life, I deserve justice, but I got mercy and grace. And it's unfathomable. It's incomprehensible. Why he did it. But he did it so we can't boast. No brag. Because faith is not an act of work that earns merit with God. He does it because he is God. Ooh. You better teach this, Clarence Edward. Now, now, now. I want to drop a couple of nuggets. Then I'm going to give you an action step to let you know why this hymn continues to progress us forward. Y'all ready for this? I'm about to land the plane. Y'all going to y'all gonna like this. You're going to trust me. You're going to like this. Grace. Grace. When we think about the grace of God, I want you to write this down. When we forgive and offer grace, it strengthens our relationships and it improves our well-being. Grace strengthens our relationship and it improves our well-being. It improves us. Do you know that, that, that God expects us to model what he does? And this is why this is so important. And, and, and I don't want you to miss this. Now, you've heard me say everyone. Everyone that we meet has a story. Everyone we meet has a backstory. And embedded in the midst of that backstory is a struggle, a challenge, an issue we know nothing about. Grace says, I withhold my judgment until I understand the full story. Grace says, I consider the backstory before I project my interpretation of that story. Grace. Forgiving and offering grace, it strengthens our relationships and it improves our well-being. When I think about what God did for me, now think about how undeserving that I was. And I got to slow my roll when it comes to my interactions with others, especially when I don't know the backstory. It's a way, grace is a way of showing kindness and understanding to someone, even when they've done something wrong or hurtful, which is why being a Christian is a lot tougher than saying you are Christian. You know, he can say whatever, but when it comes to doing, uh -huh, it's tough. Now, forgiveness, watch this. Forgiveness is like a road that leads to freedom and new beginnings. You can't be set free here if you're still holding it here. And just as a road can lead us to new places and opportunities, forgiveness can lead us to a new and better future. By forgiving, offering grace, we experience freedom. We experience hope that comes along of letting go and embracing a brighter future. Y'all all right? So let me give you some homework to do on this one. Let me give you some homework. Check this out. Lean in, matter of fact. I want you to take some time this week. 
I want you to reflect on any grudges or resentments that you may be holding on to. And then through the power of God, commit to offering grace even if you may know the backstory, I'm committing to offering grace. But Lord, they've wronged me. Mm, how many times have you wronged God? I say it, it's harder to be a Christian than to say you are a Christian. And then we want to take it a step further. I want you to consider reaching out to someone you need to forgive and offer grace to. And then begin conversing with them about moving forward in the spirit of forgiveness and reconciliation. Teach Clarence Edwards. Boy, why do I feel like it, 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 it just got quiet, real quiet in the chat? You know, we want that sanitized version of the faith where we just come in and we can listen to some worship music. We can just lift our hands and feel good, fall out, foam, and faint. It's harder to be a believer than it is to say that we are believe. And with God's grace, it's incomprehensible. You can do it. And so I want you to let me know in the comments section, who's gonna stand with me this week? Who's going to stand with me this week? Who's going to take time, reflect on grudges, resentments that you're holding on to and commit to forgiving those who wronged you? You all can ask my wife. I had to do it this week some stuff I was holding on to. Grudges, resentment, and making sure that I commit to forgiving and offering grace. Now, let's not get it twisted as I conclude, y'all. I'm not saying that the relationship is restored to the point where there is trust. No. Because just as it takes a long time to build trust up, it can be lost in a moment. So there is no restoration of previous position. I forgive you, but we got to start over. I extend grace to you but we, we, we're no longer right here. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, when you reflect on these grudges, reflect on these regretments, resentments, and then commit to forgiving. And the reason I want you to commit to doing that family of God is for one reason. One reason. Grace. And please don't miss this. We talk about grace and God's peace and how it strengthens relationships and improves well-being, super power. That's what grace is. Grace is your superpower. And we do know what superpowers do. They they transform lives. Now, I'm old school with my with my superheroes, you all. I was a Batman fan growing up. 
Today I'm a Black Panther fan. But then, during those middle school years, you know, when you goofy in that stage of your life, you know, sixth to eighth grade, you know, we go through that goofy phase when we don't know too much. I had a liking to a, a superhero. Batman's my guy, Black Panther's my guy today, all right? But growing up in, in the late 70s, early 80s, <laughs> there was a dude... His name was Shazam. Y'all remember him? I'm done. His name was Shazam. <laughs> Told you, that's a goofy stage. He was riding through the land in an RV. <laughs> I just thought that was so cool. He was a regular guy. Doing regular things. Riding around in there with this old dude. Shazam. But every so often, every episode, they would run into some trouble or they would run into people that needed help. Now, this ordinary looking guy in the van with an old dude, RV with an old dude, riding across the country, Shazam. Didn't understand it, but nevertheless, this guy was amazing because what he did was whenever they would run into trouble, have complication, he would say one word, Shazam, and then be transformed into a whole nother person, a whole nother being. And that's what grace does for us. It transforms us into a superhero were we able to do amazingly great things. Isn't that good news? As we thank God for today. Now check this out. Perhaps there is someone who is here today and you heard what you heard and you want to make a decision for God. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to consider for one moment I want you to consider that today is the time and the moment to have a relationship with God through Jesus. And you can do that by clicking that link that says connection card, fill that card out, hit that drop down menu, indicate where you are, finish it, send it back to us, and, and let's begin the journey. Can you do that? And if you're watching this on YouTube, that connection card link is in the description. You can click it and find out what's going on in and around Mars Hill. Can you do that, family? Can you do that, people of God? And now, in addition to that, I would be remiss in my duty if I did not talk about how to support Mars Hill through your tithe and your offerings. Giving is an act of worship. And since it's an act of worship, you can support us by texting MHGIVE to 33777, visiting our website at marshillchicago.org forward slash giving or through Regular mail, P.O. Box 6159, River Forest, Illinois, 60305. Thank you for joining us today in worship, and I pray that you have a wonderful day.